Uh, Hi, I'm Victor. Uh, this summer I worked in the LOSERT lab here at Univer the University of Maryland, and um, today I'm just going to talk about uh, my project um, where I worked on a model that simulates the motion of uh, an ame amoeba slime mold called Dixiocelium discoidium. Uh, just a short introduction. Um, so why do we want to study the motion of cells? Well, um, cellular motility is involved in almost um, all processes um, involved in organisms that have eukaryotic cells. So um, some examples are embryogenesis, wound healing, muscle contraction, and of course it's involved in uh, many negative effects. Um, some examples, again, metastatic cancer, heart disease, and bacterial migration. Um, so why do we want to simulate? Um, so simulations, um, there's no risk involved, almost no risk, as compared to like real experiments. Um, you can get data sets right away, um, and it's a really streamlined process. And it also um, sets up um, the stage kind of to do experiments for predictions that you make with simulations. Okay, so the model organism that we study is Dictyostidium discoidium. Um, so this is a slime mold amoeba, as I said, and the reason why we study it typically is because, first of all, it's resilient, um, it's easy to grow, easy to maintain, um, and it also is very genetically similar to many um, cells, um, especially in humans. And um, they undergo a process called streaming and aggregation, and um, this is really similar to a lot of motility, um, and specifically an example is the motility of metastatic cancer. So, that's the reason why we study. And here um, we have, uh, on the left here, I have a picture of the cells undergoing uh, vegetative growth, basically. And on the right, I have a photo of them streaming and aggregating. Okay, so the model that I used was a coarse grain stochastic model. And what this just means is, um, in our model, we left out anything that was irrelevant to what we were studying. So in our model, um, we only considered um, three forces and one chemical uh, signaling gradient, basically. And here, I have a little cartoon of um, what a coarse grain model is compared to uh, an atomistic model, or also known as a molecular model. So on the left, you may see that on the molecular model, um, they include like um, the hydrogen atoms or like protein complex protein structures, stuff like that. So, yeah. Okay, so this is uh, the basic skeleton of my model. It's a set of differential equations that models um, the motion of um, the cells. And the cells are modeled in uh, XY Cartesian coordinates. So the first differential equation you see here models um, the diffusion of the chemical signaling gradient that I used. Um, the second differential equation models um, the orientation of each cell. So um, basically each, cell, uh, each cell's orientation points towards um, the middle vector there. Um, so yeah, and the last differential equation is just a statement on the constant speed of each cell. So the derivative of the um, position of each cell is just speed, the constant speed. So um, I simulated the cells um, moving over nano ridges, which are essentially perturbations um, on the cell surface, and they look kind of like this. And basically, these um, kind of mimic the real structures that cells move on in the human body. Um, so this is just the math that goes with um, the ridges. Basically, it's a dot product times um, uh, a strength factor, which is the k sub ridge. Okay, so this is a simulation of uh, DICT cells with just the chemical signaling gradient. So as you can see um, on the right here, uh, a lot of them have aggregated. And yeah, that's, this is just a simulation with the chemical signaling gradient. Um, this is a simulation with the signaling gradient and the nano ridges. So as you can see, um, aggregation is kind of um, blocked. So there's motion in a lot of directions uh, with the nano ridges. And here I just have some data. On the right um, is a distribution of the averages of the cell's velocities um, on nano ridges. And on the left is just the same thing with um, no nano ridges. So as you can see, with the nano ridges, um, there's a lot of d uh, motion in a lot of different directions. So I also simulated um, the cells under um, an electric field, a static electric field. So um, here you can see um, uh, on the left is a simulation with just the chemical gradient and, sorry, a chemical gradient, yeah, just chemical gradient. And here on the right, I simulated with an electric field. And essentially what electric fields um, do experimentally to these cells is um, move them um, towards the cathode. And here in my simulation, I put the cathode um, on the right side 
on the right boundary here. So as you can see, um, with the electric field, um, the cells aggregate towards the right boundary. And this is just with a weak electric field. So this is a more strong electric field. Um, it's a video. Oh, could you play the video? Yeah. So this is just a short video of cell simulated under a more strong electric field. So as you can see, um, motion is directed towards the right boundary. So, and that's uh, essentially where the cathode is. So here I have uh, more distribution. So on the left, um, on the left, I have um, the distribution with just the chemical gradient, and on the right, I have it with uh, the electric field. So as you can see with the electric field, um, there's a lot of directed motion towards um, the right boundary. Um, so yeah, just future work. Uh, in the future, I want to incorporate more forces into the model, essentially. Um, one force that I'm looking at right now is uh, a drag force. And okay, so we have to wrap up, so uh, please sit, reserve your questions for the end, but let's thank our speaker.